All right, folks, part two of Consumer Choice Theory. So in the last video, we saw how we calculated the MU when we had the quantity of a good, in this case, coffee, and the total utility, which are both given. We could then find the MU, the marginal utility, which is one more of something. And now we could find the MU over P, price, and price is given. So now let's say we have not one but two goods, coffee and donuts. And now we found for donuts, we had the MU over P as a following, right? Nothing for zero, 10, 20, and 15. We also now know the price of donuts is now $1. And we see that you have a total income of $7 in your purses, in your wallets. So now we can move into the next portion of consumer choice theory, something called consumer optimal. Consumer optimum. So when you think about consumer optimum, it looks at two or more goods that we are able to completely use all of the income we are given and the last unit consume is going to equal each other. So in other words, consumer optimum is given in this expression, the MU of one good over price is gonna equal the MU of another good over price, the last unit consume, and all of the income is spent. So we assume here that we're not going to have any change left over, but we're going to use every dollar that we have in our purses and our wallets. So now we can go back to our chart and see that if we have an income of $7, it would make sense to focus on the following goods for coffee and donuts. Now we do have a 20 and a 20 in both goods. And when we focus on one cup of coffee, this translates into $5. And when we see two donuts, this would translate into $2, which gives us a total of $7. And that's the same amount that we have as our income. Therefore, we have found consumer optimum, which would be one cup of coffee and two donuts. And if you think about this, it does make sense that for most consumers, they do see, number one, coffee and donuts as complementary goods. But having one coffee and two donuts would actually make a lot of sense. It would sound really appealing, appetizing for anybody, almost anybody, anybody, especially in the early morning. So if you were able to look at this theory, consumer optimum, and let's say you could find through data collecting of your customers, you could find consumer optimum, in this case, one cup of coffee and two donuts, you could then further explain why a lot of restaurants, fast food places, cafe shops like to use these types of combo meals or combinations. Uh, in the case of coffee and donuts, you can now offer your customers one cup of coffee and two donuts for, in this case, maybe $7 or for $5. But now you know exactly at what two combinations of two goods would maximize a consumer's 